She knew. She knew Rex was going to kill her even then. It didn't stop her. She turned out to be a brave woman. I wish she had come to me that night. At least she didn't die for nothing. She's given us more ammunition than we need to nail Rex Stamp. Play it again. <sighs> well, well. The jailbird coming. Well, I was about to fly south. Was? Does that mean Lucy finally got through that rock you call a skull? Well, I didn't have much choice. Lucy wouldn't bring me Serena. Now, I'll listen to your plan, but if it doesn't work for me, Serena and I will disappear. We're good. Serena, and, and one other thing, stop. I probably never told you. You should always match your purse with your shoes. <laughs> Even knapsacks and sneakers? Oh, you know, personally, I would do that, but I'm going to have to check my fashion consultant for you. <laughs> oh, dear. You are rather late. Oh, yes, hello. Well, you know, we just had such a great time at the accountants. There were decimal points flying everywhere, but I still think being rich means you shouldn't have to nickel and dime it, you know? Well, if your accountant were doing his job properly, you wouldn't have to. Oh. Uh, hello there, Serena. Don't touch me. As I see, your wretched mood hasn't improved. Your mother was such a, a quiet child. I bet she don't like you either. When you're older, you'll learn that one's likes do not always necessarily coincide with what is best for one. What did he say? I said that uh, <clears throat> being taken away from your father and coming here to live with me, that someday you will realize that that is the best thing that's ever happened to you. Ah! At you little viper! Rex! Uh, mm. It's me, great. Since when do you have a key? Since I saw the kind of shape he's in. Check it out for yourself. Matt, I hear you're a little the worse for wear. Grace, I told you not to tell her. You should be grateful she did. You look awful. I'm fine. I can handle this. I hear you have a wound of some kind. Let me see it. I don't want you getting involved. I am already here. I'm not leaving, so show me where it is or I'll look for it myself. Oh, fine. You know, your bedside manner needs some work there, Doc. Don't complain. This is the house call. Ow, ow, ow. Oh, my ow. God. Ow. Ow. Bad boo boo. How? I fell, rollerblading. And landed on what? A bed of broken glass? Where were you? In an explosion? Yeah, yeah, in my friend's garage. I play guitar for his band. I'm serious. I am too. There's an old can of turpentine, some rags. It just ignited. Think I can sue him? If you live, you need x-rays. Had him taken already. Nothing broken. Just a little infection. This could be a lot more than an infection. You need to go to the hospital immediately. No. Grace, Grace help me. Move. No! Don't either of you touch me. Get off. Ow! Ow! Uh, I think... You will live. Did she break the skin? No, she's not a rabid beast. She's just a very scared little girl. Very scared little girl who needs to be taught a lesson. I don't think I like your tone. Oh, I'm sorry, what I meant was it's just obvious that she was raised with no discipline and no respect for her elders. Well, I think her father perhaps raised her with a distaste for authority. And his taste for human flesh, apparently. Uh, Rex? Darling, you can't really blame Serena for how she was raised. Well, perhaps not, but I would be remiss in my duties as her custodian if I didn't see to it that these bad habits she has learned from her father aren't corrected. Well, you see, that's where I come in. I think all she needs is a little influence from the fair sex. <laughs> <laughs> Excuse me, my dear, but I think you're grossly underestimating the amount of instruction that's required here. Now, what I was thinking, uh, more in the lines of sending her away to, say, a boarding school. Now, I understand Switzerland has some very fine institutions. You've got to be joking. Oh, not when it comes to Serena's upbringing. Never. Well, that's a really horrible idea, though. You know, I know those schools and, and some of the kids that turn out from those are basically just spoiled society brats. You know, and then they, they grow up and they become vapid Euro trash. My brother and I went away to school. <laughs> I find that it is a fine way to develop character in a young person. Not only that, it is the preferred style of education for the moneyed class. Well, um, gee, I just know that we cannot send Serena all the way to Europe by herself. But my dear, 
You really must put Serena's well-being ahead of your own. Well, I am. That's exactly what I'm doing. Think about it. She's had so much instability in her life, and we just can't uproot her once again. No. Well, Serena is a very, um, <clears throat> a spunky child. I'm sure she'll adjust readily. Besides, we really must consider the benefits for us. I can't see child abandonment as, as a benefit for us. Well, we're a newly married couple. We need time to solidify our relationship, to explore all the intimacies. And perhaps after a few years, we could bring Serena back. But in the meantime, I so want to give you my undivided attention now. Isn't that what you crave? I just think it would be very hard for you to do that with me in Europe. Oh, you misunderstood me. Once we get Serena settled, I, I meant that you and I would come back to the States. No, you misunderstood me. Wherever Serena goes, I go. So you want to tell me just how you escaped from jail? Well, I didn't escape from jail. From the hospital, the security's a little more relaxed. Let me guess, you, uh, you had help from the usual suspects. Yeah. I got sick. I got very sick, and then Eve came in, whisked me to General Hospital, where I've been under surveillance, and... Quarantine. Obviously. I had my plane all set, bag full of gold, and I was uh, about to take Serena and off into the wild blue yonder. The only thing that was stopping me was Lucy. She said she's got a plan, a plan that you guys think is foolproof. Yeah, I can't believe that Lucy's been a double agent this whole time. Well, I'm glad. Otherwise, Serena would have been at that house all by herself with that psychopath. That's the only good that came out of that other plan of ours. Yeah, well, this one will be different. This time, we're going to play a serious mind game on Rex. Tell me about it. Danielle doesn't die, okay? She survives the surgery. I, I switch ID tags with some young Jane Doe who had recently died. Right, but she's been in a coma. Now, I've kept her alive. Now, she's coming out of her coma, and she's ready to testify against Rex. Why don't you just take her to the cops? She, she's too weak for that right now, and I want to protect her a little longer. See, once Rex knows she's alive, he'll have to make a move on her. Sounds a little convoluted, a little crazy, and that far-fetched. Which is exactly the kind of thing that Rex would do. It's exactly what he expects other people to do. Rex thinks everyone is devious. He just thinks he's smarter. Look, Rex will bite. I know it. All we have to do is plant the smallest seed of doubt. Rex is too much of a control freak not to dig it up. Well, there's also a hundred million dollars on the line here. However, I am facing ten years in Sing Sing, and that would be that my daughter would also be living with Rex for ten years. So, you know what? I think I'm gonna go while the getting is good. You know what, Scott? You're not the only one who has something to lose. While we're standing here trying to convince you, the only woman I ever loved is playing house with a murderer. Someone that she married with your encouragement and support, as I recall. Now, the least that you can do is help us take one last shot of getting everyone out of that house alive! Besides, if you take that little girl and disappear again, you'll crush Lucy. I think she's earned a little better than that from you. All right. All right, we'll try this plan. But I'm telling you, if it looks like Rex isn't buying it, I am gone with Serena for good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. Let's set this trap. Lucky that Danielle left such a long message on your answering machine. That, plus a couple of messages she left on Jake's, gives us a lot of vocabulary to work with. It's strange. It's strange to hear a voice like this, like she's not really dead. She wasn't for your sake. When we bring Rex down, she'll be watching. Okay. It should do it. Let's hear what we got. Lucy, I... I really need to talk to you. I'm... I'm going to fix things. Sounds good. It's like a ghost. Speaking of which, we need a double for Danielle. I'll take care of that. Now, where have you supposedly been keeping Danielle alive? Uh, someplace nobody would find her. My apartment? <sighs> it's too easy to check. How about a motel? Mm -hmm. It's even harder to control. You know, I know the perfect place. It's isolated and it's private. Great place to trap a rat like Rex. And you know what? I got the perfect piece of cheese. Matt, we just want to help. I don't want either one of you involved. 
hospital. Well, that is irrelevant now. We can't just leave you. Oh, I'm not going to the hospital. Well, what do you propose we do? Treat you here? Sounds good to me. You gotta be joking. This isn't exactly a sterile environment. Oh, come on, I've grown attached to my germs. Here. Matt, this is ridiculous now. You have to... Hey! You either get out or treat me here. I'll need everything to draw labs and blood cultures. I'll be right back. Grace, no one can know. Trust me. I did. And you brought Ellen back. Lucky for you. So shoot me, I care. So, what's with all the secrecy? You've kept a few secrets of your own. You don't see me asking any questions. My life was not in danger. Mine's not either. You're here now. You give me one good reason not to call Frank Scanlon right now and have him wrestle you out of here. <laughs> People already think I can't hack it from my chair. What do they think? What are they going to think when they see me lying in bed? Since when do you care what anyone thinks? <laughs> Look, allow me a little self-respect, maybe. I don't buy that. You have been fighting public opinion ever since you got here. You enjoy it. <sighs> I'm so tired. Uh -uh. And whatever it is, I am sorry that you feel that you can't tell me. Stand off. But if you die, I'll kill you. Oh, well, Serena is on... Um... Nicely tucked in, all cuddly. She looks so adorable, you know, with her head on that pillow. Yes, her fangs sheathed. No, Rex, it's just she's suffering separation anxiety, as I would be if she were to go. You're not really thinking about sending her away, are you? Uh, well, uh, of course not, if it would upset you. It's, uh, you do realize that I adore you so much, although you really haven't given me ample opportunity to show you how much. Oh, no, no. You have definitely um, showed me how special I am already. Really? Well, no woman has ever moved me to where you have. Let's go upstairs. Hmm? Now? Yes, yes. There's nothing to be afraid of. I won't hurt you. Oh, I, I know that. But then, ah, uh, tell you what. Let me pick you up in my arms, carry you upstairs, and we will make love until dawn. Oh, Oh, there's really nothing I like more. Am I boring you? Mm, mm, mm. No, no, no. Not at all. Why? <laughs> oh, you're tired. That's it. Well, I'll tell you what. Let me rouse the cook. Have him make you a nice hot cup of espresso that will get your blood pumping. Hmm? Oh, no, no, no. You know, I don't I don't think I can take all that caffeine in my system, given the medication that the doctor has me on. It's just these darn and me, Jill, and make me so sleepy. Oh. Then perhaps you would prefer that I rock you to sleep in my arms after you've slept for a, oh, a few minutes and you've awoken. Then you could uh, arouse me, so to speak. Oh, that that sounds so lovely. A at least the sleep part. You know what? Oh my! You know what would be really nice? You could do something very, very kind for me right now. Anything. Could you just? Oh my! Let me go to sleep and get a really good night's rest alone. <laughs> Uh, you're joking. No, no, I'm not. I just really want to be at my very best, you know, so I can just be hanging from that chandelier. And I, I would just... Oh, God, I would just hate to be so sleepy that you think that you actually bore me. I, I think first impressions are terribly, terribly important. Um, Lucy, dear, uh, <clears throat> is there some, uh, uh, some problem you have that I should know about? Oh, no, not at all. Don't be silly. It's just, you are so intimidating because you are sexy perfection. And well, I just really do want to be at my best. And I promise you, if you'll just give me this one little night of rest, I'll definitely make it worth your way. Uh, well, uh, when you put it like that, how can I refuse? Uh, <laughs> oh, come here. Oh, there you go. Good. I'm just getting dizzy going all through those mazes. And I'm getting dizzy having you come in and out of my life all the time. So, what is this place anyway? Well, any kid that grew up in Port Charles has been down here. As a matter of fact, I played uh, 
been the bottle down here. All right. So what is down here? Well, it's the uh, drainage system. It goes out to the Port Charles River, but right now it's Danielle's sick room. Do you think Rex is going to buy this? Well, you know, he always plans for the worst possible things, and having Danielle testify would be one of them, so I'm sure he will probably show up. What if he doesn't believe it? Well, then I'm going to have to fly south. And I know Serena, and, and I would miss the people that we've grown very attached to. You are the only person that's important in Serena's life. The rest of us are just frosting. Okay, frosting. Let me ask you something. Hmm, let me guess. Hmm, you want me to be the Danielle double, right? No flies on you today. That's right. And besides, I don't think your legs would look very good in pantyhose. All right, now listen, this is very serious, though, because up until now, all you've uh, risked is your career and your freedom. Once you set yourself up down here, you could be the target for murder. Hey, what took you so long? I was just about ready to eat Ralph. What? Who's Ralph? The bat up there. Whoa! There's a bat? Come on, you're not afraid of flying rats, are you? No, I am not afraid of flying rats. I am a doctor. I have dissected cadavers that would make him finish your lunch. Oh! Mm. Nerves of steel, just as I suspected. That was just an automatic reflex. Mm-hmm. Hey, listen, you didn't have to bring another sleeping bag because I don't think this ground is that hard. I'll be all right with just the one. Oh, right. Don't be so greedy. They're not both for you. They're not? No. This place is creepy even for you to tolerate by yourself, so... And besides, who knows when Rex is going to decide to show up here. And when he does, Danielle better be in this bed. Listen, you don't have to do this. Nobody would think the less of you. I'm, I could probably get Karen to do it or, hell, put a wig on Jake. No, 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 no. Karen can't do it. All right? She needs to pretend to be caring for Danielle in this bed here. And I'm no expert on Rex's criminal mind, but I'm pretty sure he's going to need to see a woman lying in this bed to convince him that Danielle is really alive. I'm not afraid. Famous last words. I promise you, Rex will have to kill me before he gets to you. I believe you. Good. Come on. Let's eat. Right. This may be the last opportunity that we have to hang out together, especially if you decide to fly the coop. And, well, I'm not finished charming you yet. It's chicken. I think I'll eat the bat. A hundred and three. <clears throat> Maybe septic. Maybe it was something I ate. Who is it? It's me. Mm, let her in. Is that thing loaded? Won't do any good empty. Let her in. Somebody's gonna hear her. Okay, now we can get to work. See you in the morning. Yeah, well, <clears throat> sleep well, do mm. dream of me. Oh, uh, yes, uh, of course. Um, good night. Hey. Ta. Uh, Ciao. Oh, why? Got it. I I've got it. <laughs> Hello? Lucy, it's Kevin. I need to see you. It's, it's for me. Oh. Then I'll uh, see you in the morning. Good night. Hey, dear. Please don't call me here. Lucy, I really think that you need to hear what Danielle has to say. Danielle? Danielle is dead. But I've just learned that she's very much alive. You must have been drinking. It turns out that Danielle has been in a coma. Jake's been keeping her alive, but she's awake now. She says you're in terrible danger. From whom? From Rex. He's the kidnapper, Lucy. Scott was right all along. This is weird and pathetic, Kevin Collins. I want you to make an appointment with your psychiatrist first thing in the morning. But it's true, Lucy. I'm going to hang up now. Wait, Lucy. Danielle wants to speak to you. What? Lucy, I, I need to see you. I'm going to fix things no matter how I have to pay for it later.
Are the results of Ned's call sure? No. I told them to deliver them to me the second that they were ready. This is Dr. Burgess. I sent a culture to be analyzed last night, and I don't have the results. Who is this? Listen, Thomas, you have... Dr. Burgess. Never mind. Thank you. Damn. Well, at least I know what antibiotic to prescribe. I'm going to get some things and head back on over to Matt's. It's more serious than we thought. We don't have any time to waste. Well, you certainly are a bright and early Adam girl and all that stuff. How come? Do you have something special to do at school today? No, I want to be gone before Rex gets up. Oh, I see. There you go. Do you like living here? Well, uh, let's just say that I love living with you. I hate it here. It's dark and creepy. And Rex is the creepiest thing of all. I trust you both slept well. And you, you're up early this morning. I assumed with all the antihistamines you took, you would have been in bed till noon. Oh, well, there's no more sleeping to noon for me. Not with little ones. They're up at the crack of dawn. <laughs> well, how delightful for you. But you were so sure that uh, the medication would have kept you practically comatose. And <laughs> here you are, I mean, uh, positively rejuvenated this morning. Well, Yep, there's nothing like a good night's rest. Hmm? I'm going to drop Serena off at school, and then I'm going to run by Jack's Cosmetics, do a little work, so I'll see you later. I'll be tingling with anticipation. Oh, well, mm, not in front of the child. Uh, let's get those gloves on. Do you have them? All right. Oh, let's get them on. Remember, all the little fingers have to go in each little house. Let's find oh. a home. Can you do that one? And I'll get this one. There you go. Ooh. Oh, Serena, how was your first night with your Aunt Lucy and Uncle Rex? Do you like your new room, hmm? Is it time to go, Lucy? Oh. Serena, yeah. dear, I ask you a question. Please answer me. Oh. Oh. No, 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 don't, don't. I, I will have a, a, a talk with her, I promise. Darling, darling, don't think about that. Just think about all the perfect ways we can spend the evening together, okay, Tom? <laughs> Lucy's not going to be here for another couple hours. We've got some time. Maybe there's like ghosts or something down here. Nah, just bats. Oh, God, I'd feel better if I had some holy water or crucifix or a priest. Father Damien? Uh, this isn't funny. Do you realize what day this is? Your birthday? It's Friday the 13th. Anything can happen. The apples last night was kind of rough wasn't it i've had better evenings thank you i'm sorry i'm just tired i would do anything for serena friday the 13th is going to be the worst day of rex stanton's life and they're not going to get any better when he's locked up in sing sing for the rest of his miserable stinking lousy life when was your last health inspection well, we just met, but uh, shouldn't you be in school? Teacher's workshop. If you don't want to eat it, just leave it. If you really think my food is going to make you sick, why don't you ask Bernadette? Who's Bernadette? You haven't even noticed my newest addition. She is a fortune-telling machine. And before <laughs> you ask her anything, why don't you just taste the food? Listen to me, Karen. I do not want you going in those catacombs by yourself. I won't be alone. Hey, Mike. Hey. Do you have my takeout order ready? I'll check. Okay. Listen to me. Messing with Rex is dangerous, okay? You have to be at the hospital. No, I can get somebody to cover for no, me. No, you can't, okay? There's Lark. Shh. Hey, Lark. Glad to hear that you moved into the Scanlon household. How's your mom doing? None of your business. 
I'm visiting her today. Well, I hope she's feeling better soon. Okay, here you go. Oh, thank you. Sure, sir. enjoy. Okay. Now, which one of you uh, brave souls is going to be the first to uh, have your fortune told by the beautiful Bernadette? <laughs> Bernadette? <laughs> Mike's new girlfriend, the uh, fortune telling machine. <laughs> <laughs> well, that wouldn't be me. Sorry. <laughs> Gotta go. Bye, guys. Bye. I'm Karen Wait. I can't. I'm sorry. I have to do this. Please understand. We picked you to be the first one no. to take Bernadette for a spin. <laughs> so does she take perky pills or what? <laughs> so let me guess, fame, fortune, and romance. <laughs> Too many condiments result in a swelled head. <laughs> well, it'll be difficult, but I'll refrain from paying you any compliments. Thank you. <laughs> you guys don't get out much, do you? Uh -oh. Uh -oh. I, I win. Oh. Excuse me. Mm. Ow! Oh. Ah. Yeah, that looked like it hurt. Let me mm. see. Ah. Well, no blood, but you're going to have a nice goose egg. Anybody <laughs> get the license plate number of that truck? Huh? Ketchup, mustard, that box is filled with condiments. Too many condiments gave Joe a swell bed. <laughs> Bernadette was right. <laughs> I don't think I'm going to be sick. Are you sure you weren't followed? I really don't like lying to my husband. So just say what you have to say and let me get back to my real life. First, thank you for not telling Rex that Danielle's a lie. I helped pick out the dress that Jake wanted to bury Danielle in. So how do you expect me to believe this? You heard her voice on the phone. I don't know what I heard. Danielle went into a coma before she could tell the police that Rex kidnapped Serena. Jake suspected that Rex caused Danielle's car accident, so he took her, he hit her. But Joe and Karen, in this very hospital, came out and announced to us that Danielle had died here. Joe and Karen have been in on it since the beginning. They even helped Jake switch the bodies. They've been taking care of her ever since. But she's awake now and she wants to tell the truth. Then why not just go to the police? Because she'll have to pay for her part in the kidnapping. Jake wants to make sure that she's strong enough to handle it. Why would you tell me? I am... Rex's wife, after all? Because she says you're in danger. And I can't walk away from that. So this is just another pathetic attempt to get me back. Is that it? I may never have stopped loving you, Lucy. You know me. You know when I'm telling the truth. Well, if I'm going to even believe this for a minute, I have to have some sort of proof. I have to see Danielle alive. I'll have to get Jake's permission for that. But I'll call you as soon as I have an answer, right? I won't be holding my breath. I think you know the answer to that. The infection has gotten into your blood. Well, I'd like to keep things interesting. I have started you on a broad-spectrum antibiotic, but we have got to get you to the hospital. I'm not going. Look, I paid you the courtesy to wait until you were awake to tell you about the results. But I am going to take you to the hospital. No. Your blood is poisoned. You know what that means. If I go to the hospital, then everything I've worked for is going to be ruined. Everyone's going to see me some fragile... Don't you even fix your mouth to tell me that lie. I assume carrying a gun around is not an everyday activity for you. I grew up in a rough neighborhood. Tell me the truth. I know that you're scared, and I am too, but there is nothing that I can do for you unless I know what is going on. You have to trust me. I cannot 
go to the hospital. You promise that you will not admit me. I got here as soon as I could. Oh, God. He's burning up. He's getting worse. We have to take him to GH. I've got the antibiotics going, so that should start to make a difference soon. We can't just wait. Listen, waiting is what we would be doing at the hospital anyway. I can't go along with this anymore, Ellen. I'm calling an ambulance. Listen, he made me swear not to take him in. Now, we don't have all of the facts, and he does. I have got to believe that he is making the best decision for himself. I hate this. Listen, go back to the hospital and get me some gauze and antibiotic ointment. I need to redress his wounds. Okay. You better know what you're doing. Oh, hey, Grace. How's yeah. uh, how's Matt's flu? Oh, he's still pretty sick. The doctor Burgess is with him. Uh, he's got two beautiful women waiting on him, hand and foot. <laughs> I'll have to remember that the next time I'm sick. You know, Grace, I have this little tickle in my throat. Trust me, Mike. You don't want what Matt has. Great things to tell you. The seminar on renal disease has been postponed, which means I can go with you guys to visit Mrs. Madison. Uh, what's the other news? Lucky in love, unlucky in cars. <laughs> you don't even have a car. Well, I dig the lucky in love part. You are not going anywhere near my mother. I just want to let her know that you're in good hands. Uh, I think Lark is right. What? I, I doubt if Mrs. Madison is up to seeing new people. Um, besides, it, it should be Lark's decision. Thank you for recognizing that I do have a brain. Dr. Morris, a yes. car just creamed your bike. Oh, no! Well, Bernadette? You're right again. I'm lucky in cars. <laughs> Too bad for the prom queen. I don't want to get that camera set just right because I don't want to miss a single frame. I wonder if blondes really do have more fun. No, no, no. Come on, that's quite a bit of fun. As a brunette. And you don't look too bad for a girl who spent the night in a cave. <laughs> Thank you. Hey, guys. Hey! Come bearing food. Karen, how do I look? Oh, I'm sorry, Jake. That was thoughtless. It's okay. So Danielle would want us to do everything we could to bring Rex down. I'd rather get this generator set up. Oh, hope everything looks okay. Rex is no fool. Danielle's the only person that could blow him out of the water. He'll show up. Trust me. Let's get these bandages on. When Rex follows Lucy down here, we've got to be like Boy Scouts. Prepared. I, uh, trust you had a, a pleasant morning? Well, now, how could I have had a pleasant morning when you weren't here? Oh, well, you are just far too kind to me. And how are things at Jack's? Oh, super. Lovely. You know, I think that company of mine practically runs itself now. <laughs> oh, I got it. Hello? Oh, Don, uh, yes. Did you get those contracts I ordered? I just spoke to Jake. Danielle wants to see you. I'm beginning to have second thoughts about all of this, you know. You see, for Serena's sake, you at least have to talk to her. All right, Don, fine. I will be there in a few minutes, Tom. Problems? Oh, uh, yes. Actually, what can I say? At, at Jack's. I've, I've got to run back over there. Really? I thought that company practically ran itself. Well, yes, it does. 
most days, doesn't it? But that's what I love about business. Isn't that what you just love? You know, you never know when somebody's going to throw you a curl. Curve. Ball. Whatever. Um, hopefully we will get together uh, when I get back. And hopefully everything will be just as it should be when I return. Ta. Ta. My bike looks like a pretzel. Ugh. You've got something weird on your hands with this machine, Mike. Where'd you get it? Well, I stopped by uh, Rudy's antique store the other day, and uh, he said the previous owner got rid of it because it spooked all of his customers. I, what can I say? I fell in love with her. Uh-oh. Something's burning. Excuse me. Uh. <laughs> How do I look? Great. Are you nervous about seeing your mom? No, no, I'm, I'm just not sure how this new sweater looks on me. New sweater? Relax, I didn't knock over Wyndham's. I used my money for Mario's and the money Frank gave me. You gave her money? Yeah, she needed some new things. Uh, well, we'd better get going. I'm sure your mom is waiting for us. Let me get my stuff and I'm ready. Okay. So I'll pick you up later for our pre-Valentine's Day dinner? <sighs> We're okay, right? You're, you're cool with not coming with us? Yeah, yeah, it's fine. It'll be good for you to spend some time with Lark. I'm going to stay here and get good old Bernadette to give me some hot investment tips. <laughs> You're hooked on that thing, aren't you? I'm, I'm not going to be channel surfing some night and find you on the Psychic Prince connection, am I? Do you think I could get on? <laughs> you are scary. Fortunately, you're also sexy as hell. Ready to go? Yeah. Um, see you later? Yeah. Okay. Hey, Julie. What's new? Well, Mike's got a, a fortune-telling machine that actually works. Hmm. Well, finally, someone who can uh, convince you that I'm destined to win the quarter -man. A friend in need is a friend indeed. <laughs> well, I guess that machine is bogus after all. You don't have any friends. <laughs> That's uh, funny. Hmm. Don't make me... I can't. Hey, it's me. It's Ellen. You can't make me... Hey, no one's going to make you do anything. I won't let them. Okay, Scott, we know what's writing on this. Okay. Just trying to get a handle on the nerves here. Uh, forget about butterflies. I've got elephants doing flips in my stomach. Eve, we can do this. We're serenin' for Danielle. We're not gonna let Rex hurt anybody else. Okay, here we go. We'll be back there. Okay, come on, come on, get down. Oh, my gosh. Karen, I can't believe you went along with this. You did the right thing, protecting Danielle from Rex. But you've been keeping her down here in a cave? Are you crazy? I guess all of you went crazy. And for some of you, it was a much shorter route to go, wasn't it? Let's leave our personal life out of this. You're here for her, not for me. Step closer. Danielle? She's lost consciousness. Well, how, how long has she been like this? She's been going in and out ever since she came out of the coma. Well, how long before she comes out of it again? Well, it's hard to say. Oh, Danielle, it's so sad to see you like this. Do you believe me now? Well, Kevin, I believe that Danielle is alive, but that doesn't prove Rex is guilty. 
Lucy, for God's sake, what more do you need? I... I need more. It, it doesn't prove that Rex is the person who kidnapped Serena, and it doesn't prove that Rex caused Daniel's accident. She called you herself to warn you about the man. So you say, but I need to hear it from Danielle herself. Fine, but she could be out for hours. Well, fine. I have to go. I have a husband who's expecting me at home, and um, I want to get out of this place. Please take Lucy, me out. Lucy, can't you just wait a while, see if she comes to? No, I'm going to go home, and you call me when she does come to. Just promise me that you won't say anything to Rex for now. All right, fine. I will not say anything to Rex until I, I talk to Danielle. Now, could you please get me out of here? All right, all right. Embarrassing. I slipped in the slush and nearly broke my uh, neck. <laughs> yeah, close enough. Hey, what's in the bag? Uh, I thought Matt could use some hot soup. Oh, well, need some help? No, that's Jill. okay. I got it. That's some chicken soup you got there. Since when did we start treating the uh, flu with uh, sterile gauze? You know what? Um. He asked me to get some stuff for his medical bag, and I, I guess I grabbed the wrong one by mistake, so I guess, well, the soup's yeah. in the car. <laughs> you know, uh, you should stick to medicine, Grace. You'll never make it as a professional liar. No, I'm not lying. There really is another bag. Yeah, give it a rest. Tell me what's going on. Fine, I'll find out for myself. Matt! Matt, open up. It's Chris. Matt! Come on, Matt, open up. Chris, stop it. You're making a scene. Not until you tell me what's going on. There's nothing to tell. Yes, I know you. It's written all over your face. There's something very, very wrong here. Now, let me in. Ellen, it's me. Open the door. What are you doing here, Dr. Ramsey? I want to know what the big mystery is. It's none of your concern. Well, I'm here now, so I'd like to take a look for myself. Please. He's my friend, too. He should be in the hospital. That is my call, Doctor. Then what are you waiting for? You don't have the resources you need here. Let's go. He doesn't want to be admitted. And I gave him my word. Dr. Burgess, you and I both know how ill he is. Let's not waste any more time. Let's move him. Cocktail for you, my dear. It's too bad your Prince Charming won't be able to rescue you this time. This will be mercifully quick. Ah, oh, but when I 
think of all you could have done with your share of the money. Hmm? <laughs> well, you could have even bought yourself a career. Huh? And the plan was so foolproof. My only mistake is I realized too late what a big fool I was dealing with in you. But that's water under the bridge now. Hmm? You have but a few short minutes left of your miserable life. I would be careful who you're calling a fool. Uh, well, I assume that this isn't just a mere coincidence. You got that one right. What are you looking for, Rex? A way out? Oh, no, no, no. Just the rest of your merry band. They must be around here someplace. Just you and me. The idea of you going mano y mano against me is a pigment of your imagination. You see, Mr. Baldwin, you lack the necessary mental capacity. Nonetheless, let's continue on with this absurd charade. You never do shut up, do you, Stanton? Well, finally you said something that I wanted to hear because you just admitted to extortion, kidnapping, and attempted murder. Who's there here to believe you? Just me? I, I got video cameras. I got one over here, two, three. As the saying goes, got you covered, Rex. I hate to burst your bubble, but the science of modern criminology isn't all it's cracked up to be. Tapes have a way of getting lost in the evidence room. That's why I brought my own muscle. You want to meet the producer? Great performance, Mr. Stanton. You must be very, very proud of yourself. And now I want to introduce you to the star of the show. Well... I'll tell you, took every ounce of strength I had not to run for the hills when I saw him coming at me with that hypodermic thing. You're finished, Rex. Finished. Ah! Ah! No, 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 no. Mr. Baldwin, see, with what I have left in this syringe, I would have no trouble whatsoever killing the beautiful Dr. Lambert. Now, you just back off. Now, don't be stupid, Stanton. You've played your cards, Mr. But it appears though I've been dealt a friend to man, and I do intend to play it out. The question is, man to man, are you willing to bet against the killer? Or are you going to realize it is finally time for you to fold? I put the needle down. <coughs> is playing the hero so important that you would risk Dr. Lambert's life? Hmm? That's not what's going to happen here. No? No. Now, do you have a better idea? Oh, come on, even you stick the needle in, what are you going to do? Look around here. If you got a pocket full of those things, you're not getting out of your lives, Danny. Well, you could be wrong, because if I go down, you're going down with me. Hey, Rex. Jake, Jake, come on, come on, Jake, get back. Back up, it's enough. It's enough. It's not enough. No, that's rather creepy, cause. It's gonna have to be enough for now. Are you all right? I'm fine, I'm fine. You know, Jake is right. You're like a virus. And ever since you came to town, all you've been doing is causing misery. Oh, you can talk big now, Baldwin. Hmm? But deep down inside, I really do scare you. Your life will never be the same again. I almost ruined you once, and I look forward to my next opportunity. Let me tell you, son, Stanton, you're going to prison for the rest of your life. And if you were to ever get out of there, and you come anywhere close to my family, I will cut your head off and I will feed it to the fish! Get out of here. Get him out of here. Right, listen, listen, listen. You better get that uh, neck looked at with the needle. It'll be fine. I'll be okay. I think I probably would have felt something by now, all right? Oh. Oh. oh, Scotty. Oh. You know, he really should have known better than to let wounds of that nature get infected. Well, now that his uh, wounds are clean and dressed, I'll just leave hey, um, to... Did he explain how this happened? He said that he was helping his cousin do some repairs in the garage and a can of turpentine exploded. And you bought it? We didn't question her about it. Judging from his injuries, that seems almost impossible to believe. I'm really grateful for what you did. I 
We can get it. You are going to get Serena back. I would have done anything to help you do that. Well, you put your life on the line, and I am... I am grateful. Uh, for a minute there, I thought I was going to die for the cause. Oh, I would never have let that happen to you. I know. So it looks like you licked that deadly virus that sent you to the hospital, huh? Yeah, I'm, I'm feeling a little better. Why don't you uh, make it a point to get back to that hospital room as soon as you can? Snuggle up under that vinyl tent and uh, see that you stay out of more trouble. I'll arrange to have the guard on duty on a little donut break for you. I'm on my way. But listen, do me a favor. Don't let Stanton out of your sight. He is like some kind of a coyote. He would chew his own foot off to get out. I know. And, uh, Scott, I read you all wrong, and I'm sorry. Good luck. FBI, huh? Alan. Matt. How are you feeling? I'm at the hospital. Yes. You brought me to the hospital. That's just great. Matt, we didn't have a choice. Is that right? You didn't have a choice but to break your promise. How does that work? We made a judgment call. Your condition was getting worse. Who's we? Is Grace in on this? And Chris Ramsey. Oh, give me a break. What's next, the evening news? I don't understand your attitude. As a physician, you knew the risk you were running by not seeking treatment earlier. I should have never let you in my room. But you did. I'm a doctor, Matt. That is the first and last thing I am. Now, if you wanted a babysitter, someone to hold your hand and not lift a finger to help you, then you're right. You shouldn't have let me into your room. You gave me your word. You had infected, necrotizing wounds with septicemia and massive infection all throughout your body. I had to bring you back here to save your life. You were wrong to do it, Ellen. No, I was wrong to make a promise that I couldn't keep and still think of myself as a doctor. And you were wrong to ask me to do it. You don't understand. No. I understand that you want me to believe that all of this infection and, and damage was caused by an exploding can of turpentine. That's what happened. I think you're lying. Why do you have a gun pointed at the door anytime someone knocks? I did the best I could with the little information you gave me, and I am not proud of it. If Chris Ramsey hadn't shown up, I might have kept my promise and let you die. Sorry, right, Emma. I'm already a dead man. Hello, St. Jude's Hospital. My name is Dennis Johnson. I'm a reporter for the Doylestown Bulletin. Have you admitted any bomb blast victims in the past few days? Okay. Thanks. Oh, Doc, why are we here? Do you realize what we've just been through with everything we've accomplished? I can't even begin to let it sink in. Can't we just go home, please? Lucy, there's nothing I'd rather do than to take you home to the lighthouse, crawl into bed, and hold you knowing that you're safe. But we can't ignore this. Why not? Because he's asked for you. But it's done. It, it's over. He's confessed. Scott has it all on tape. So all I want to do is have this ridiculous marriage of mine annulled and erase that man from my memory. I don't ever even want to hear his name again. It's not that simple. Rex, sorry. That man has no idea that you were in on the stain. The last he heard, you were calling me a jerk and heading home to him. Now, it's better that we make him think that we're sincere. Why? Why? It, it's done. It doesn't matter whether he knows if I was in on it or not. And besides, he's going to find out eventually that I was not on his side from the very beginning. Well, hopefully later, more than sooner. Oh. He's a vengeful man, Lucy. Now, 
Now, I want to make sure that all of our bases are covered before we call it quits, all right? I want to go home. I want to go back to the lighthouse. I want to grab Sigmund and just be together and try and get back the life we had. Please. Rex isn't saying a word until his attorney gets here. Is he still asking to speak to me? He is. You're under no obligation to see him, Miss Coe. Do you think that if I go in there, he could possibly incriminate himself further? Possibly. Okay, dokie. Let's go in there then, all right? Good. He's locked down tighter than a drum. Just the conjugal visit I requested with my loving wife. Hmm? I mean, you'd be surprised how quickly a man becomes lonely behind bars. All right, darling, what is it? Why have they arrested you? You are good, I will give you that. The ever-dutiful wife. Well, tell me, what, what is it? What have you done? Can we please dispense with this Pollyanna routine? If I have to stomach one more second of this deception, I swear to you, I will crush that pretty little head of yours like a grape. Are we clear? Very clear. What is it you want from me? Want it. See, I only wanted one thing from you. That was your loyalty. And for one moment in time, I thought I had it for one very brief, delicious second. I thought you loved me, but this betrayal has destroyed me far more than any punishment the law will ever mete out to me. Fortunately, I had the foresight to take out an insurance policy. An insurance policy? Yes, there were too many uh, off-kilter events with their equally odd explanations that kept me from trusting you wholeheartedly. And in the end, you acted as I feared you would. I am so very happy to have disappointed you. Are you sure about that? Because you will have to be punished, you know that? No, because there's nothing you can do to me now. What makes you think I haven't already done it? Kevin? Do call Kevin in here. I, I so much do enjoy his company. But just for your information, there is a neat, slow-acting poison coursing through your body as we speak. I put it there, right before you left for the catacombs. How could you do that? When? when? I slipped a little something extra in your coffee this morning. Kevin! Kevin! Lucy, what's going on? I don't think I quite understand. Won't you lean in a little closer? I'd like a little private moment between a husband and his wife. Lucy, don't get near him. I won't bite. See, darling, had you been on the up and up, when we returned from the catacombs, I would have given you a nice cup of tea with the antidote in it. But now, well, that's impossible. There is only one person who can give you that antidote. That person is me. You bastard! I will see you in hell, darling. You'll be there waiting for me. What have you done to me? What have you done? Get him out of here. Lucy, Lucy, tell me what happened. What happened? Lucy, Lucy, tell me. 